It's a gorgeous day outside here. It is fall and it is going to be 20 degrees today. Absolutely beautiful and a wonderful day for these little bees. And I just put in their feeder with some new water. So they're drinking their sugar water. But today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be insulating our rooftop of the hive with some wool. Now I am going to tell you what the absolute silent killer of bees over winter are. And we'll see if you can get a good look here. And actually it's pretty good. Now I've had this open for a little bit, um, but when I came out here initially, there were droplets here. So little tiny bits of condensation. And condensation is absolutely what is gonna kill your bees in the winter. It's not gonna be the general, temp the general cold temperature, uh, bees, what they do is they huddle together uh, inside the hive all together and vibrate and raise the temperature. What absolutely kills them is condensation. So droplets from your roof onto the bees in sub-zero temperature that freezes on them, they have no defense against that. Um, so it's really important to do something about it. So what most people do is they winterize their hives in Canada. And that usually includes a wrap that goes around your hive. So we'll probably be doing that. We might try wax paper. I heard it was a cost effective way. Wax paper is black. So what it does is it'll absorb the heat. It's not itself an insulator, but it will attract the heat and block the wind from getting in crevices. So the bees are getting really active right now. But what I need to do is, and what I'm going to do is there's a few ways to insulate your top. Now, Standard beehives have a lot of different ways you can insulate the top because there are things made for the specs of a standard size top. With, uh, with these types of hives, they're always built a different size. So I need to manually create something that I can kind of stuff in the top of here that's going to be relatively flat that'll insulate against condensation and any temperature loss. And it'll also sit on the top of these bars and just basically insulate um, really well uh, the entire hive. So what I use is I have absolutely free wool because I have all this wool and wool where I am is basically worthless. You can't sell it. Nobody's buying it, uh, but it is an awesome insulator. So if you bag it, you can insulate buildings. You can insulate a lot of things with wool. It is excellent for that purpose. And the best part is it's easy to shape. So if I bought some hard insulation and it just didn't fit because it was too fat, it would be really difficult to get it in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, basically play with this bag until it's the right shape and depth that I need to fit in that top. And then I'm going to seal it up and stuff it in there. And that's going to be my insulation. Uh, quick, relatively quick, free and easy. And uh, yeah. And then after that, when it gets a little colder, I'll end up wrapping this. I don't want to wrap it prematurely. Like I said, it's 20 degrees right now. And uh, the goal right now isn't so much to block the wind and all that, because like I said, it's not actually cold right now. But what it is, I need to start preparing because this might end up being a bit more of a project than I think it is. So I'm going to show you after I'm done how it fits in there and how the whole thing comes together. It's going to be a bit of a pain because anytime I want to see the bees, I'm going to have to remove this. Um, so that's why I definitely don't want to do it too early in the season, but I also don't want to leave it too late. So anyway, it's all about dealing with condensation. So uh, I don't know if these tops can be made with something that would be more resistant. These are actually already insulated. This is an incredibly thick top. Like it's really thick. So whatever's in here does a good job of insulating as it is. It's really just protecting from those droplets. And uh, with it being such a major problem, there might not be a huge issue with this top. Like that might've been made like this with that in mind. But like I said, I did see a little condensation when I first opened it. And any condensation is too much because it's gonna drip directly onto the comb. So anyway, this is a little bit of the before. We will see what it looks like when I mangle up all this wool, try to flatten it out and stuff it in there. So let's see what it looks like. Thanks. All right. So the hardest part of this entire construction, believe it or not, was actually keeping it flat enough. 
So what I ended up doing, I thought one bag was going to cover this area. It didn't. Two bags do it a lot better. So I um, got the bags. I molded it to the shape of the roof. I spread out the wool within each bag uh, so it's as flat as it could be. Uh, it can go a lot flatter, so I think that this is going to be fine. And then I just made sure there were no gaps, and I taped the bags to keep its general shape. And I think this should do... Well, I mean, this is going to be awesome insulation. The challenging part is going to be constantly getting this on and off of the hive. What I think I'm going to have to do is tape it right into the uh, cover. That way I can just take it on and off and not have to constantly be setting it. Um, and then I'll probably end up tying the lid down with rope just because, because of the um, upward pressure that these bags are going to put on the lid. It's not going to be as snug of a fit as it was before. So, uh, yeah, I think it'll need to be tied down just so the wind can't take it off. But I think that this actually worked out quite well. It was a little easier to uh, shape these than I expected. Uh, once again, we need to be able to keep them in there, but I think that'll be okay with a little bit of tape. And yeah, um, I mean, it's going to be hard to know exactly how good or successful this is until uh, come spring. Uh, I think it'll add a lot to prevent any air from seeping in because, of course, uh, the wool uh, is moldable. So like anywhere that there is a gap or something, the wool's going to kind of fill that hole as opposed to the rigid top that we had before, which clearly had gaps and seams all around it. And that's great for airflow in the summer and you definitely need that. But in the winter, you're trying to fill in all those holes. And I think this is actually a great little solution uh, for the uh, roof of a hive, a top bar beehive anyway. So yeah, there's that. Uh, I can show you when I put the wax paper around the hive to prevent the wind from going in the sides and all that. Uh, the bees are quite active right now, which is awesome. And yeah, so there's that. That's, uh, yeah, that's a simple way to take care of the silent killer that is moisture and condensation. Uh, two of the things that are absolutely going to kill your hives in a cold winter. So you need to be aware. You need to find a solution. There are a lot of solutions. There's a lot of different lids. Um, there's a lot of things you can buy pre-made that'll work, uh, but for a top bar beehive, that's always a little tricky. And it's nice to be able to use something you have yourself. So this is wool, as I said, completely free. And where I am, uh, wool has almost no value. It's just, it, you, you can't sell it for anything. So it's almost waste material. But wool makes excellent insulation. And as I said earlier, not just for this purpose, but in any of your animal buildings, you can actually use wool instead of standard store-bought insulation. So if you have a lot of sheep, you have free insulation everywhere. Um, so uh, take advantage of it. Use it. Um, bag it up. It, it's, there's nothing to it. Um, it's easy to shape. It's super light, super easy to handle. There's really no downsides to it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's there. Take advantage. Anyway. Thanks for joining, and I really hope that this was educational to somebody and helped somebody out. Bye, guys.